Welcome to the August edition of North St. Paul Notes. I'm your host, Paul Anderson. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to learn about the annual Fall Roundup Parade. Stay tuned, North St. Paul Notes is straight ahead. Hello and welcome to the August edition of North St. Paul Notes. We hope this show will keep you up to date on the news and events that are of interest to the residents of North St. Paul. We're still enjoying the summer months, but it's not too early to start thinking about the Fall Roundup Parade. The parade takes place on Thursday, September 13th, along 7th Avenue in downtown North St. Paul. Today I'm joined by the parade coordinator, Elizabeth Kolbeck. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for having me, Paul. You're known as the coordinator, but I, I call you the boss. Oh. So that's showing a little more respect and being more specific about you, how you operate, right? I'm not sure I'm worthy <laughs> of that title. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, anyway. Just a humble servant, Paul. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Well, like I, like I said before, you are... Uh, one of the ultimate volunteers in town. So uh, we're grateful for the fact that you do take on this job. And how many years has it been now? I was trying to figure out, I think it's five or maybe six. Wow. Yeah. You have great endurance and uh, are able to take a lot of abuse too. Very, maybe not. Very little. I think people have been awfully kind to me, actually. Maybe they're just so grateful that you take that job that they don't want to antagonize you. There you go. <laughs> well, um, just so our viewers know, have you been in, in the business, in business in North St. Paul very long? And, and why don't you tell us about that business? What is it? Thanks for asking. So. We have a hair studio. It's called Bakkenwood Hair Studio. And um, the name comes from? My business partner and I, Maura, put our maiden names together. Okay. She's Maura Bakken, uh, her maiden name, and Elizabeth Wood was mine, so we put them together to make Bakkenwood Hair Studio. Okay. Yeah. I imagine you get that question fairly often. We do. A lot of times the name Bakken really lights a spark in people, and they say, well, where do you get that Bakken? Yeah. And so, yeah. It's a good conversation starter. So what is your partner's name now? Mora. Mora. Mora Humsey. Hum Humsey. Humsey. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I don't know if I ever heard that. I guess I probably did, but I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's actually 10 years ago this month uh, that we opened the studio. 10 years. Yeah. Goes fast. It, it does go fast. We're trying to do 10 fun things this year to commemorate our 10 okay. year. And where and, are you located? Um, we're in the same building as Subway on 7th Avenue East in North St. Paul. Okay. Um, just kitty corner from the History Museum. Right. Mm -hmm. well, everybody knows where the History Museum well, is. Well, they know where one of the museums is anyway. <laughs> the Scouting Museum is right across the street from here. Right. So. But being next to Subway it prob probably gives you more. Uh, visibility than anything else. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good good location. For it you. is a good location. Yeah. We love our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And you're, is it just two of you in the business? So there's three of us all together. Okay. We have uh, another gal that uh, manages with us and her name's Erin Dobrin. Okay. And uh, so we've been together, all, the three of us, all ten of the years. Oh, you have? Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I, I haven't met Erin before, but She's a uh, wonderful lady, so. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, We're lucky to have each other. I guess so. Yeah. Sounds like you all get along, and after 10 years, you probably will continue to get along. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so, um, I was just going to mention that there is quite a long history of parades in North St. Paul, as I may have mentioned before to you, but uh, uh, the earliest one we have a record of uh, is the is the 25th anniversary of the city in 1912. 
Oh, wow. And that was a big parade, and we have pictures of it, and I, I hope we can show that sometime during the, during the show. Uh, this is the one that had floats and had uh, people dressed in costumes and uh, uh, had a number of horse units, and they also had, uh, I don't know about a band. I never saw anything of a band in the, in the photo. That's all we have to go by is the, the photo and what they show in the photo. Right. And uh, there's a picture that was, it was actually a panoramic picture, a panoramic picture, which uh, is a technology that came into use in, a, in early in the century where the camera would start on the left side and then scan the whole scene. And so they could take a picture all the way around the circle, but most people, most of these were large groups that were spread out across an area. So this one was taken right at the corner of Charles Street and 7th Avenue looking east from there. Okay. And it shows in that picture, it shows a Newman's Bar and it shows the mortuary that was right where Sandberg's is now. There was a Newman's Bar in North St. Paul. Actually, there were three Newman Bars at one time. There's one right across the street where Kendall's used to be, and then Bill Newman's bar, which is the one that exists today. So it's kind of an interesting shot. We've also got a picture showing uh, 1938, uh, 38 or 39 parade. And uh, I think we also have a 1928 parade. And uh, the local undertaker who was in North St. Paul from the beginning Joe Muller, uh, he's also in that panoramic picture, but he was always the Grand Marshal in the parade. And back then, I understand Grand Marshals had a totally different purpose, is that correct? I'm not sure, I, 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 didn't, I don't know about I that. I believe back then, Grand Marshals were there to direct the parade okay. uh, during lineup, make sure everybody was in their appropriate okay. place. So you and were then, actually a Grand Marshal then? <laughs> no, or should be. it's more of a it's more of an honor now to be, you know, it was an honor and also quite a duty back in the day. But uh, sure, yeah. yeah. Well, the Grand Marshal Joe Muller would ride a horse some of the time, but he would also march in at the head of the parade with a baton in his hand. Okay. Beating to the music, so I guess there was a band right behind him. <laughs> Very <laughs> well. I, I suppose that might be why he did it more than once because. Well, there was some work behind it back then. Yeah, and I think he was uh, he liked the prestige too. Oh. It was good for business. Oh. He had a, a funeral parlor but also a, a furniture store oh, wow. connected with it. And that was quite common in those days that oh. the furniture store would be uh, in the same facility as the uh, as the uh, uh, mortuary. Okay. So they would sell furniture and caskets in other words. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk about today's parade, or this year's parade. And uh, I understand you have a few units signed up now, but there's still a need for more. There's room, yeah. So there's okay. still time. Uh, the deadline to apply is August 13th. Um, so there's still time, and there is room. So if anybody's out there that wants to be in the parade that still hasn't applied, you can go on the city website or you can go on to the History Cruisers website and get your application there. Okay. And uh, you can email it in, you could mail it in, or you can hand it in. Sure. Whatever's most convenient for you. Okay. Now, how many do you have now so far? So far, I think we're up to 22. Okay. Which is... Typically, you have... Um, Usually we're in the 60 range. We have to cut it off at 70, sometimes less if the units are very large, mm -hmm. just because we can't be going on too, too far after uh, dark for right. safety. And at, by that time, the, the days are shorter, and right. so darkness comes maybe 7 or 7.30. Yeah. And it's uh, hard to view the parade in, in the dark. In the dark. <laughs> so it's... I always say it's the best parade in the state of Minnesota because it's short and sweet. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of um, giving participants that always hand out a lot of good things to the kids. Sure. There's food vendors there. Um, and uh, it's a good time. There's always, you know, the Vulcans and the clowns and the mm -hmm. bands. Of course, your favorite, we have some 
uh, Scottish pipe and drum <laughs> going to be joining us this year. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy I guess I mentioned it. something about the, <laughs> the pipes, <laughs> the bagpipes. And, There's a backstory uh, I've there. I've had some experience with that, not yeah. playing, but listening sometimes. Right. Uh, but I don't listen very often. <laughs> so I'll probably hear them this year. Yeah. Maybe even if I'm not downtown. Right. <laughs> if you're feeling nostalgic, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's what I need. Tell us more about some of the entry, entries you have so far. So um, one thing that we're really excited about is our Grand Marshals. Mm -hmm. We have two. Um, they're World War II veterans, um, and they uh, live right in North St. Paul at Polar Ridge. Um, we have Bill Hewitt. Um, Mr. Hewitt, um, he's a young veteran at 92 years old. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, he uh, was a pleasure to talk to. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a business in Matamidi after the war sure. um, that did very well and continues today. I believe they're merging with another big company. Um, Hewitt Manufacturing. Okay. Um, we have Don Fitch. Um, Don Fitch was an uh, East Sider. Uh, many people might know him by owning the Sherwood Lounge, okay. for which he just sold two years ago. Is that was that on White Bear Avenue? Yeah. Or? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sold that two years ago at the age of 92. Wow. Um, so he's starting to starting to slow down, sure. deciding to retire, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but uh, they were both a pleasure to, uh, to speak to and sure. what a gift it is that they're going to join us in the parade and, and uh, you know, give us their presence. and What a gift it is that they're still with us. Right, too. exactly. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. most of the World War II vets now are either in their late 80s or in their 90s. So Yes. And, uh, so it, it's interesting always to talk with those folks. They always have some stories to tell. And they're so, they were so generous in speaking with me. I, I was Good. really humbled by the time that they gave sure. to talk to me. And Great. Mm -hmm. I look forward to talking to them more. Yeah, yeah. I talked to uh, Mr. Miller as well, who's a volunteer at the uh, History Museum on right. Saturdays. George Miller. Yes, also a World War II veteran. And also a former Businessman, businessman in North St. Paul. Right. He, his family started, his father and mother started Miller Shoes, mm -hmm. and uh, then he continued after the war, he continued in the business and took it over later on. So, uh, yeah, he always has some interesting stories. He was a veteran of the Battle of the Bulge, yeah. which was a pretty scary experience. So, had some real. Uh, experiences that yeah, make you wonder how you made it through. So, right. Yeah. What else do you have coming? Well, let's see. Let me look at my list here. I thought you'd have it all memorized. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a bit memorized. Yeah. Um, some interesting anniversaries we have this year. So the American Legion Color Guard is celebrating their 100th year. Mm. Um, and then uh, the Oakdale Summerfest Royalty is cel celebrating their 30th year. Um, Apollo Heating and Air Conditioning, which I noticed is moving um, from their location on 36 and Hadley down to 36 and 61. Um, okay. They're celebrating their 38th year. So, and we're celebrating our 10th year. So right. a lot of, yeah, a lot of anniversaries, but you know, we really like a good marching band. Sure. And of course, we're going to have the United Marching Band of District 622. So they're comprised of 8th through 12th graders from District 622. and Both Tartan and North. Yep. And John Glenn and Maplewood. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. So all of these kids have been marching in numbers of parades all spring and summer long. And I believe that the Fall Roundup Parade is, is their last parade. Oh. Yeah, of the season. Okay, for so the that's, season. that's, yep, their okay. grand finale. Uh, I know some people would like to see more bands. What, what's your answer to people when they, when they say about something about wishing they had more bands? Right. Well, um, we're very fortunate that the District 622 United Marching Band is 
top notch. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the bands that you see at parades um, that are like college bands and of the higher caliber, mm -hmm. they charge a pretty good fee. Right. So it depends on what you can afford as well. Sure. Yeah. Your budget doesn't allow mm -hmm. for some of the big not all the big time. band right. groups. Right. Yeah. And they are they go all over the country and compete and and uh, so they're excellent bands but and it'd be fun to see them but it's not really practical for not for all us. the time right, right right okay so anything else that you uh, can think of that, um, um, the northern light show choir is always a wonderful performance oh, sure. so um, a fun fact we always have the district 622 marching band at the front of the parade mm -hmm. because there's a fair number of those kids that are also in the show choir. Mm -hmm. um, so they run back on the parade route to get to the end of the parade where the Northern Lights show choir then performs okay. as they go and they're last. So a lot of those kids that you see that just didn't went through the line with the marching band are also in the, uh, in the show choir performance. Uh, so hard workers and sure. Great performers. That re that reminds me of something I didn't mention about the uh, panoramic pictures. Oh. When this camera would scan the scene, go across the scene that they were f photographing, some of the people on the far end would run around behind the group and get in the picture again. So some of those you see have people in the picture t in two different locations. So <laughs> that was a favorite trick. I thought that was just like a modern thing that kids did nowadays with their panoramic <laughs> no, pictures. and these were usually adults. Wow, that's that's <laughs> yeah. a pretty cool fact. It's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do, you, do you have any other groups that you want to mention? Well, let's see. I know we had talked about this, and I don't recall now all of what you had said, but how, how about uh, you always have some politicians in the, in the oh, parade, too? Oh, there's one, um, one that's applied, uh, and it's for Ramsey County Sheriff. It's a volunteer, it sounds like it's a volunteer-led unit for Jack Serier. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so far, that's the only political entry uh, of the parade. But there's going there's, to be more, I'm right. very certain. This election year, for sure. Right. There's a lot yeah. going on this year. So I, I plan to have uh, the parade have to be cut off this year because I'm pretty sure of all the entrants. I'll have to cut it off as, at a certain point. So mm -hmm. I encourage people to get their apps in as, sure. as soon as possible. What, uh, what does it cost to, to have an entry in the parade? It's $150. Okay. Yep. If you're a member of the business association, it's free. Okay. Um, or if you're fire, police, or military, it's free. Or volunteer organization? So if you're a nonprofit, we, nonprofit. Do, we do ask for $25. Okay. But if your nonprofit is a hardship uh, and can't afford that, all you have to do is write hardship and you're in. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That makes it a little easier, I'm sure, yep. for some groups. Yep. Okay. Um, what about volunteers? How many do you use? Well, luckily, uh, the History Cruisers, because of their Friday Night Car Show volunteerism, the yellow shirts that they mm -hmm. have coming every, every Friday, a lot of those men and women come the day of the parade to, like Paul Houliston, he you know, mm -hmm. does the blocking off of all the roads and, and has the, it timed. He's the, uh, the gatekeeper. Yes, he has <laughs> it timed just so the road closes about, you know, 10 minutes before the parade starts right. um, as not to disrupt too many things. So he's, mm -hmm. he coordinates and orchestrates that very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, his volunteers do a, a incredible job as well, uh, monitoring those closed points so that nobody goes through or... Mm -hmm. um, so, through the um, History Cruise volunteers, we, we kind of are able to um, get that parade route moving smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, we do, we could use a few more, so sure. I could use 
um, a couple more people to help out. So if anybody's interested in helping the day of the parade, um, putting stakes in with numbers to where units sure. go on the street, that would be a great help. Um, also somebody to help um, or shadow uh, with a clipboard and um, make sure everybody's lined up appropriately and uh, if anybody has any questions. Sometimes you need, one year we had a Zamboni come oh. and uh, there was a, there's a pretty good incline where we line up. There and, it is, yes. And so he parked on the upper hand side of that hill Okay. and I just went and talked because I noticed he was a Zamboni and a little out of order. I said, hey, mm. what's going on? He says, well, I don't think I can get that Zamboni up that hill. Can I just wait here and tell my unit number? I said, you bet. So yeah. there's little things like that uh, that come up that it would be nice to have somebody uh, help out with as sure. well the day of the parade. So, things things happen. the Grand Marshal used to do in 19... Yeah, right. <laughs> 19, and, yeah. 1928 right. or, or even earlier than right, that. Right, right. Um, yeah, I guess you kind of, you do some of your planning on the fly yeah. as you're going and, and so yeah. you're forced into it. Right. It's, it's understandable because yeah. you, you can't anticipate everything that might happen. <laughs> Very true. And so, so far, nothing really serious has gone wrong. Thank goodness. <laughs> and, and that's always, you know, um, something I'm really cautious about. Yeah. I always tell all the units, you know, if you're going to hand out candy or goodies, please hand it out. You okay. know, don't throw it from your vehicles because if it that's... lands in the... Your intention is to get it on the sidewalk. Right. Well, that doesn't always happen. So, you know, you kind of got to roll, you have to have people walking on the side and rolling them on the sidewalk right. uh, uh, to hand them out because I, I worry about the little kids and sure. the urge to run and go grab that piece of candy that's in the middle of the road and the, the unit drivers, I don't want them to have to worry about little ones coming out right. in front of them. And, and also it keeps the, believe it or not, it keeps the parade moving swifter I'm sure it does uh, yeah. keeps uh, the line you know the space between units tighter when mm -hmm. you don't have the random children running right. in and out because you do you have to stop and wait and wait and wait right. and that's how we get the gaps sure. so it all works itself out in that way I still remember one year when I was narrating the parade for, for the cable TV oh. uh, we were sitting at the table and the city council went by and they just pelted us with candy. <laughs> no, there has to be laws. And I thought, there has to be laws against doing that. Well, you know, you can't control the city council sometimes. Jeez. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize I had so many enemies. <laughs> Where are their manners? That's right. I tell you. Who knows? Who knows about some people, right? Right? <laughs> well, um, I appreciate your coming on the program, and uh, we're just about out of time, but uh, I'm hoping to get some of those photos, the old photos, on the air, too, and we'll see how that works. But uh, it's been fun talking to you again, and I, I don't know how many times you've been on before. I guess you don't remember either. I think um, I think I was first on in 2014, I want to say. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I looked back in my notes and I couldn't find where you were, and so it might have been when you were with somebody else, and they just didn't. And then I think we were just you and I that first time, and then I was lucky enough to be joined with Summer Splash sure. and Paul Houliston from right. Cruisers, and and yeah. uh, so that was nice being in the large group as well. For sure, it takes oh. the pressure off, right? Yes, it does. <laughs> well, but you, I, you always set me at ease, so thank well, you for you that. Did, Paul. You did fine, so. Thanks for being on again. So we've been talking to Elizabeth Kolbeck, who is the parade coordinator, or boss, as I said. Uh, we're out of time on this month's show. Join us again next month when we'll bring you more news about North St. Paul. I'm Paul Anderson, speaking for everyone at the city of North St. Paul. Thank you for watching. <laughs>